Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for January the 3rd. I'm Jonathan Keensler. Today's scripture reading is found in Genesis chapter 6 through 8 and Matthew chapter 3. The title of my devotional is The End of the Flood. And we're going to be looking at Genesis 8 verse 11, which says, The dove came to him toward evening, and behold, in her beak was a freshly picked olive leaf. So no one knew that the water was abated from the earth. Now, this is a momentous occasion because it signals new life and a new beginning. The water covered the, covered the face of the earth just like in the beginning of creation when darkness was over the surface of the deep. And there we saw that the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. Um, and here also similarly, the dove flew over the surface of the water. So it is a new kind of creation that's taking place taking place, a new beginning for, for God's people that is going to begin with um, God's righteous servant Noah and his family. Now, the date, what's interesting here is the numbers are actually very significant. The date of the dove actually um, finding the olive branch would be exactly nine months from the time of the flood's beginning. It began on the seventh, 17th day, that's when the flood began, 17th day of the second month. And here with the new hope of new creation on the 17th day of the 11th month. Um, and we see that because it was uh, the last time we see a, a dating here is the first day of the 10th month. And then we see 40 days and then we have the addition of seven more days. So why nine months? Perhaps because it is three cubed, even 30 times three times three. Um, that is 270 days. That is nine months. This is a time of holiness. Anytime you see numbers that are cubed, for example, multiplied by themselves and multiplied by themselves again. Um, the Holy of Holies, for example, is seen as, as this in the Old Testament, in the tabernacle, the temple. Um, we also see it then in the new temple in both e of Ezekiel and in the new Jerusalem. Just as a reminder, how big is the city of um, um the city of, of God, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, we see that it's 12,000 times 12,000 times 12,000. Now, the number is steady. It's, a, it's a really a great distance. I think 1,200 or six, somewhere around 1,600 even miles, um, but then cubed. Uh, and the significance is the 12,000 there, um, of course, but it's, it's cubed. And so what we see is this is God's doing, God's work even, and it's a holy, even new beginning. Even in here, it's God's judgment on earth is one that is perfectly ordered by God. It's set apart by him. It's not out of control. Um, God brought about the judgment that was needed in order to bring about a new creation. There were, were no wasted days, no wasted time. His wrath is perfect and it's not out of control. And we also see this when Israel is punished. It too is, is one of set times. Uh, and we see that, for example, because of her unbelief, Israel wanders for 40 years. Uh, Israel's exile is to last 70 years. And we see Daniel talking about uh, the 70 even weeks, 70 times 7. Now, that's a, it's a, actually a 7 times 7 times 10. That is a new jubilee that's going to be uh, a, a perfect amount where God will deal with sin once and for all and bring about his new creation work. And that's going to be found in Christ. In Revelation, as seen by the sets of seals, trumpets, and bowls, and these are multiples of seven, God's wrath is seen to be ordered as well. It's not chaotic. The Spirit of God always brings new creation out of chaos, out of disorder. God forms and then he fills, and we see that he has a, a purpose for it. So does it bring you confidence that God has all things under his control? Do you trust God to bring new life to your situation, even when you feel like the troubles are flooding in? So when you think of Noah, remember that the flood waters they came, but they didn't last longer than they needed to. 
Uh, and the same goes with all the disasters, all the judgment that God brings. He puts a limit. He sets a time for it. And when he will bring about a new creation. And that's what we're to have our eyes on. Not on this world, which is passing away. But we're to put our eyes on the new Jerusalem, which will never pass away. We're to keep our eyes on Jesus, who was already seated as king over his kingdom. And he will bring us even and lead us into the springs of the water of life. Uh, and we can have great joy even now in the midst of our difficulties, knowing what God has in store for us and knowing that his promises are sure and that he will bring us through it all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great hope. And even that we see here in terms of there's judgment being brought in terms of the flood. You are king of the flood. You are Lord of all. Uh, and Lord, you're bringing about this world to your desired conclusion. We're not to fear. We're to keep our eyes on you and know that you're the great king and the judge. So Lord, let us serve you. Let us love you now. Give you all our, our worship. In your name we pray. Amen.